Hello and welcome to Learn System View in five minutes. This is tutorial 27 on a very interesting topic of performing HDL and RF system co-design and simulation in System View. And we will take example of the QPSK transmitter, which we have been building on in the past few tutorial videos. Before we get started, um, you know, first thing first, if you haven't done so, I would request you to subscribe to my channel. And once you subscribe, click on this bell icon to start receiving the notification whenever there is a new video post. On this channel, you will find plenty of videos which might be of your interest and already created in a few playlists um, categorizing the videos as per the topics. And we have few more exciting playlists uh, coming up in next few weeks. So you will be benefited by all these um, you know, new tutorial videos coming your way. And if you have already subscribed it, uh, thanks a lot for your support and keeping me motivated. Now let's look at what we will be end up doing in this tutorial video. And after we we go through various steps, you would be able to take up an HDL code, which in this case is representing the baseband QPSK modulator design and the RF system, which is representing the RF transmitter portion for us. And we would be able to probe the modulator output which is in HDL format using our VSA sync and also the out RF output using the same VSA sync. So in here, what you will be able to see at after RF transmitter output at around 2.4 gigahertz, you have a little distortion added to our baseband and the overall system performance looks like this. But in case you want to debug how good or how bad is your FPGA modulator design or HDL representation, we are using the same set of data processing using VSA and demodulating the signal and showing you the modulator characteristics. So here you can notice your HDL modulator is giving you around 0.8% EVM, which is getting distorted to 5% due to RF nonlinearities. Sound exciting enough? So let's quickly go through and see what uh, we, we uh, would like to do here and how can we enable uh, some of these things which I just mentioned. Now remember in one of the earlier tutorial videos, we already talked about how to build a QPSK digital modulator. And in case you haven't watched that video, I would recommend you to go and look at some of the earlier videos in this playlist. And then uh, we analyze the data using the VSA uh, sync we have. And looking at the floating point modulator, we have a pretty decent looking you know, modulator performance with around 0.7.8% of EVM. Now, after we we done with the QPSK baseband modulator, we went ahead and learned about how to perform RF system analysis, and we took up a sample RF transmitter system, and we analyzed the system. In this case, I'm using a little more complicated system than what we talked about in the tutorial video. Here, the transmitter is employing two-stage upconversion process, but the output frequency is the same, 2.4 gigahertz, just to show you that you're not limited to very simple systems, you can build pretty complex systems. Now, once we've performed that complex uh, RF system, we could look at all the traditional measurements, and we already learned about how to do various level diagrams and look at the power spectrums, et cetera. Now, after we perform the, the whole um, you know, baseband and RF individual sections, we put them together into to form a mixed signal uh, you know, system design, and we looked at how do we do cross probing between digital section and the baseband section? Now, in my case, I went ahead and included an HDL code, and you can refer to the last tutorial video on getting started with HDL uh, co simulation in System View. We brought in the HDL code for our modulator, and here are all the HDL files required in the order of compilation uh, what we need for our modulator um, performance. If you run this code and notice we are still using VSA despite running in HDL code, um, which otherwise in a traditional way, you will end up seeing only the, the plus and minus, um, I mean, uh, one and zeros kind of signal. But here, despite using HDL code, I'm able to look at the modulator performance. I'm seeing the constellation, the spectrum, the EVM, and notice our HDL representation is showing a very good EVM, which is matching very well with our you know, floating point implementation. Again, a great value. And I bet if you have been doing a lot of VHDL programming, 
you could analyze that live in the condition in which your modulator eventually or the system eventually is going to be utilized. Isn't that look great uh, to, to analyze your digital baseband system and look at the RF characteristics and, and quantify the real performance metric, what matters the most. Now, once we have the HDL representation and we validate the HDL representation within same system view platform, I went ahead and used the same fundamentals we learned in the mixed signal uh, system design. We took an HDL code and this block is just to convert the fixed point data into envelope, RF envelope as needed for our RF link. And this block is only doing the power control. So this is not actually an amplifier, but in this case, it has a gain of minus 10 dB, which is basically acting as an attenuator to control the input IF power level. Now our signal goes into RF link like we talked about before, and we have one probe at the you know, start of RF link, one at the output of RF link. Now if you look at HDL output as we expected earlier also, so our EVM is around 0.7% and everything looks okay. Now when we start looking at the RF output, however, you can see the distortion caused by the RF uh, system and we can see the equivalent impact in terms of constellation and EVM. But in this case, the difference is I don't have a floating point idealistic uh, kind of QPSK modulator like in our earlier tutorial videos. Here I have a full blown representation of our actual HDL code, which eventually will be implemented on an FPGA. Now, while doing this kind of analysis, if you would like to, uh, uh, the model sim GUI to come up like shown in the earlier tutorial video, we can display HDL simulator GUI uh, we can go ahead and run this code. We can either deactivate or keep this VSA active. Doesn't matter, but now system view will launch the model sim interface and load all the HDL files uh, which we prepared. I prepared the test signal, process that through the model sim, and eventually we will get the output of model sim back into system view. And then we should be able to see the performance um, in our VSA. So here I would go ahead and run. Uh, the model sim simulation and once the model sim analyzes the data we we can see the data so my my modulator right now is 14 bit precision you can see all the bits here you can see the data in the corresponding bits for a particular duration and now if i go back to our modulator again we can see the performance of of my hdl simulator so whether you want to work in a model sim interface and you want to dig deeper into the classical way of looking data via system view. And at the same time, you want to see the system view output. Uh, it's all uh, for you to see and cross debug your uh, you know, complete uh, you know, mixed signal systems. So that's all for this video. Just before we end, just a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, feel free to subscribe to this uh, channel of mine and make sure you click the bell icon. If you like the video, don't forget to press the like button uh, below the, the video. Uh, thanks a lot for your time and attention.